My name is Yosef Ben Ezra, CTO and co-founder of the New Photonics. So our vision is all of the paradigm shift, and I will uh, demonstrate step by step how we are implementing uh, this uh, all optical signal processing in order to improve uh, uh, the connectivity and also uh, uh, we have a vision uh, to implement uh, this all optical signal processing also for uh, 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 accelerators uh, for uh, new, uh, deep neural networks, etc. And I will uh, uh, explain what are the gaps and how we are closing uh, those uh, uh, gaps. So let's start from the uh, linear drive. Uh, this is a lot of motivation to reduce the power, reduce the latency, uh, latency cost, and complexity of uh, uh, the connectivity. Uh, if you are uh, looking for the transceiver, uh, all transceivers today, most uh, of them include DSP. It's not really digital signal processor uh, because it's not a programmable device. It's a dedicated signal processor. Actually, it's, it's for gearboxing, uh, sometimes for the modulation format conversion, uh, uh, retiming, uh, 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 it uh, uh, handles some uh, impairments of the channel, uh, but it costs a lot. It takes a lot of power. So the new trend is actually a LRO, linear uh, receiver optic. Credo is uh, uh, promoting this technology, and LPO, linear drive optics. You can uh, significantly reduce uh, the power, the complexity, and latency uh, of the device, but uh, there are some uh, 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 inherent problems. And one of them is uh, the lack of interoperability. Because when you are designing a, a transceiver, there are uh, some differences in RF design between the vendors. So we cannot really achieve interoperability. Today, LPO, developed by NVIDIA, can work with NVIDIA, and uh, uh, the same with the other vendors. So how you can really achieve a linear drive optics. So what is our solution? Our solution is based on all optical signal processing. So yes, uh, uh, in the linear op drive optics, we are not using standard DSP. But instead, we can use all optical signal processing. Uh, and I will demonstrate how this all optical signal processing uh, actually achieves interoperability and improves the quality of the signal. So our solution is scalable. Uh, we achieve consistent performance, reduce the system power and the cost. Uh, so what is uh, uh, our solution? Our solution is based on programmable for optical signal processing. There are programmable filters uh, uh, on silicon. So here you can see uh, the transfer function from a, a, a vector a network analyzer, and you can see the limitation uh, of the bandwidth. You have a lot of uh, uh, losses at the Nyquist frequency. So if you will uh, use uh, this channel, uh, it will introduce a lot of inter-symbol interference. What you can see on the right, on the right we are using all optical equalizer, and you can see that the transfer function is very flat. So you can improve the quality of the channel. The system and device is programmable. So you can adopt yourself to the real channel. And this is actually comparison between the equalizer, the standard equalizer, and the performance you can achieve with this equalizer. And with our all optical equalizer, you can see that we uh, can overperform uh, the standard equalizer. Uh, uh, the next step of, for uh, implementing the all optical signal processing is actually all optical service. Uh, we are using comb lasers. We are not using comb lasers based on uh, the uh, microcomb silicon nitrides. Our comb lasers are. Uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, passively mod lock lasers. They are very uh, small uh, devices. They can uh, generate up to 32 
uh, modes uh, simultaneously from a uh, uh, very small uh, semiconductor uh, uh, laser. Actually, uh, if you are looking uh, to, to the spectrum of the comb laser, it's a comb in the frequency do domain, but if you are looking in the time domain, in the time domain, it's the pulse train. So we are using time division uh, multiplexing. Uh, one year ago, during OFC, we have demonstrated the 224 gigabit per second uh, transmission over the lane. And uh, during the last uh, OFC, in collaboration with Credo, we have uh, demonstrated 448 gigabit per second per lane. Uh, I can show how it works. Uh, okay, I will skip because uh, we are uh, limited in time. In addition, what we are doing, we can also uh, uh, implement uh, this uh, 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 comb laser for modulation format conversion. What you can see here, we are taking two lanes of uh, 100 gigabit per second on of key, NRZ, non return to zero, and using the all optical signal processing, we can uh, create a 224 gigabit pound force signal. What is the advantage in this uh, approach? We are using our pulse lasers, and pulses are separated in the time. So it's very easy to achieve a, a zero error operation with on of king signal. So when you are uh, actually <coughs> taking this to 100 gigabit uh, uh, energy signals, and by interleaving, you are achieving the pump four signal. The uh, symbols are separated in time, so there is not a, a inter symbol interference. So you can achieve a pump four operation with almost zero bit error rate. This can be helped also to reduce the entire power of the system. Because in this case, you almost don't need a forward error correction. So the system level, you can reduce more uh, power uh, because you are completely eliminating uh, the need in the uh, digital signal processing uh, for gearboxing, for modulation format conversion, uh, for error corrections, etc. how we can contribute uh, to the <coughs> AI clusters and the AI accelerators. Today, there is an inherent problem for the integrated photonics. And the problem is related to the ability of calibration and real-time monitoring of photonic circuits. The way to do it today, actually we are using monitoring photodiodes in order to measure the intensity of the light in your system. But it's not scalable, because in order to use the monitoring photodiode, you are taking 5, 6 percentage of the energy from the waveguide. So if you, if you have a huge integrated photonic circuit, it's impossible. OK, let's say now you know your diagnostics, you know the exact power of the light in your system, but you want to change locally the refractive index in order to uh, uh, actually uh, change the phase of the light in order to achieve the weights you are looking in your system. Today, mostly, it's done by thermal heaters. You can read the paper from MIT, uh, Nature, they are using such neural networks, very complex. It's not effective also by means of power consumption. So what we are bringing, what innovation we are bringing uh, in this field, we have developed so-called non-invasive photonic device. It's a new optical device, new guy in the room. This device can monitor the power of the light inside the waveguides, even not taking single photon from the waveguide. 
how it is done. It's not a magic. As we understand that uh, the confinement factor of the light in the waveguide is not 100%. So there are some donated photons outside the waveguide. So the way is how to collect them and how to measure the intensity of the light in indirect way using those photons. So we are doing it. OK, this is one part. So we can monitor the power without taking even a single photo from the waveguide. But you want to introduce some local phase changes in the waveguide. So we are doing it at the same point. Okay. And we can, without heating, change the refractive index locally at the waveguide. So this allows you to calibrate and monitor your system in real time. So in this case, we are reducing uh, the power consumption definitely. You, are, you can shrink the integrated circuits to the smaller footprint. We have physical models of those devices. You can use those physical models, and we are working in synopsis uh, with other companies uh, in order to uh, implement those models in a PDKs and in order to create libraries, and you can use it in your development process. So if you will find that at the level of the simulation, the calibration process is very complex, that means that your uh, design is not optimal. So you can redesign the system even you are going before you are going to the production. Okay, so I, I will finish it. This is also the demo uh, uh, of the non-invasive device, but we are limited in time, so I will skip also uh, this one. And uh, actually, uh, as you see, uh, we have a very uh, uh, prevision how we can uh, do with photons more than we are doing today. Because today we are using phot photons just for the transmission of the information, but we definitely can uh, do more in order to reduce the power consumption, in order to overcome the bottleneck of electronic uh, devices, in order to uh, reduce the latency, cost and complexity, and also to shrink the development time. Thank you.